ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the studio this evening. And as you can see, I'm in the desert southwest, Utah, Arizona, southern Colorado, maybe. I don't know, somewhere like that. No, it's a green screen. But that's what I'm going to be painting tonight. And uh, I think it's a very exciting painting. I love painting the desert. I love the oranges, the reds, the ochres in all of the rocks. Uh, so join me as we get started painting this um, just inside. I'll show you how we do it. Okay, so I've gotten my image pre-drawn and I'm going to start by painting the sky. What I've got is just a little bit of straight cerulean blue. I apologize for the blurriness here. I promise you as we get a little color on this page it's going to get better. Now the sky here, I'm going to be a little bit careful about and paint around uh, the distant hills. They're so light, they're, they're almost white back there. I, I don't want the blue to overpower them, and blue can be a very powerful color. Um, and speaking of colors, let's talk about the paints that I'm using today. I am, as I do most of the time, I'm using my M. Graham uh, palette of paints. You can see it in the top right hand corner there. And I'm just putting in a basic sky. Nothing uh, too much of a big deal about it. I'm going to drop maybe a little cloud in here, I think. Uh, yeah, right about there. Maybe let that go across. A couple little clouds. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to try uh, to maybe make that stand out a little bit by putting uh, a bit of dark uh, just underneath it. It's a great way to make that cloud stand out a little bit. And then that, that paint's all going to mix and meld together and run into one. There we go. Just spread that out a little bit. A quick way to do a sky. Just a little cloud there. Uh, the brush that I'm using right now that I have my hand is an a Raphael Aquasoft brush. It's a nice big brush. Holds a massive amount of water. If you want to cover a space in a short amount of time, you can use that brush. Uh, I've been changing my brushes up lately. The brushes I'm using uh, right now to put this distant hill on is a Rubloff brush. This is a Kolinsky Sable brush. I actually found uh, these guys on eBay and ordered a couple of brushes from them. I really enjoyed their brushes, so I bought this set, which this is the best set that they have. A professional set. They call it the master set of brushes. Anyway, it's very nice. So uh, this is a little bit of Pyrol Red with just a bit of a Hansa Yellow in there, a cold yellow in there and very light wash. This is going to be pushed way in the background. When this dries, it's going to be very light. Very light. It looks a little darker now, but there it is. Uh, and now that I've got my sky on and I've got my distant hills on, uh, I can't touch the mountains on the side, so I'm going to come into the foreground. I'm going to use the same bit of that color as those distant hills. And I'm just going to put in the desert floor. Just brushing it on. I'm not trying to be super careful about where it goes. I just want, at this point, to get a layer of color on. We'll doctor it up. We'll make it look a little better uh, later on. <clears throat> Mixing a little bit of a blue-green here. For this little creek, this little river that flows down there. There was a little bit of phthalo green on my palette, but I've put some blue in with that. And uh, now some of that phthalo uh, green with a little bit of cobalt green, dropping some spots in here. These will eventually become bushes or brambles or trees of some sort here on the desert floor. A little bit of ochre, a little bit of uh, burnt umber, just mixing some colors in here and letting these all mingle together. As I said later on, we're going to come and we'll uh, we'll connect uh, the bottom, the floor here of the mountain to the top here. Okay, 
So now moving on, it's dry enough. The sky is dry enough and the distant mountains are dry enough that we can just lay on some base color for our near mountains. And I'm using, again, Pyrol Red, a little bit of Hansa Yellow. I'll throw a little bit of almost pure Gamboge or Azo Orange in here and from a place to place just to uh, help change the color temperature just a little bit but uh, again it's the first layer of this painting and it's more important that we color the entire sheet with some paper more than uh, trying to figure out exactly what color I want now here I wasn't quite looking up I stopped my painting a, a little bit I should have I should have painted all the way down uh, instead of stopping at the, the the line of trees that's there, but that's okay. Uh, it'll work out in the end. You will have a nice bright green down there, and this little guy sticks out, makes the makes the the middle of the painting really come together here. All right, some nice colors, a little bit of burnt umber in here some straight azo orange a little bit of straight gamboge and the painting is already starting to take shape and then this would be the closest hill i'm going to paint this a bit darker uh, i want it to be closer to me i want it to be a bit more in shadow also so while I'm going to keep those orange tones, those beautiful orange tones, I am going to mix in a little bit more burnt umber in with it. Uh, and that will give it just a little bit darker tone. Maybe I'm being a little heavier handed with that burnt umber also. Uh, but you can see we've got a beautiful already, a beautiful landscape happening. And here again, I should have just connected all of the red, orange that's there together. I didn't. Um, not a big deal. Those will be some trees there. And they'll just have a, a brighter pop of green on them when we paint them in. Okay, so I've let this dry just a little bit. And as you can see, those distant hills really did dry very light, very light. I've got to darken them up just a little bit. Come on, camera, work with me. Why, why when I turn it right side up, does it work better? I don't understand that. Uh, but I'm just going to put some color on here and then blend it down a little bit. Right, I want a darker, a darker, richer, deeper color at the base. The rock is redder and uh, much lighter at the top. It's almost like a white layer up there. But I don't want to. I don't want to put too much detail on these hills. These are way back in the back. I want everybody's focus to be on the hills in the front. Okay, a little, a little pyrrole red a little uh, gamboge and I'm gonna start to define my hills here just to give me a little bit of a reference I'm gonna put these giant cracks right down the side of these and I'm gonna use those to help me gauge uh, where I should make some vertical lines and to start with defining these rocks I don't I didn't need to do it this way uh, but it just helps me visualize uh, the shape of these hills a little bit, these mountains a little bit. Could have done this uh, many different ways, but this is just the one I chose here, and I think you'll see I'm just mixing up a bit more of this paint. You'll see the method to my madness as this is uh, coming through. That little bit that I've left white off to the left-hand side of this painting, I'm just going to leave it. I don't need it to be painted in. Uh, there's going to be a big tree go there and cover that all up. There's a bit of a, a hill in the distance right there. 
and my paint in the front uh, there's maybe a little highlight right here let me lift that out I should say at this point uh, if you can't tell I've sped this video up just a little bit I think the running time of this video is about 20 minutes uh, I think in real time painting this painting it took me about 35 minutes to paint this entire thing so uh, not a long time to sit down and paint it uh, and you could do this I don't know if I've mentioned yet the paper that I'm using in this video is arches paper it's a 140 pound cold pressed paper all right, now here I'm just dropping in. I know there's some small brush-like objects <laughs> growing at the base of these hills. I'm just dropping in a little bit of green. This happens to be cobalt green, uh, which to my eye is a very good uh, deserty green. Okay, here I'm. I've got my red mixture, my red-orange mixture that I normally have that I've used on the left-hand side, and I've mixed a little bit of sepia in there. It's a little bit of deeper, darker brown. I want this hill, this mountain, to be a bit more in shadow, a bit darker. Uh, so I've just dropped that little bit in. And some of this cobalt green where I've got some bushes growing here. There we go. And that should look like a little bit of something growing at the base. There's some of that green down here. Maybe there's a little bit of grass or weeds growing right next to our small brook or river there, whatever that is. We'll just drop in some green there. If that doesn't exactly match our reference photo, that's okay. I'm not going to worry about that because uh, we're just going to call it artistic license if we have to. Now a very light layer of I need to turn this I need to turn this around. If I'm going to do this, there we go. Uh, a very light layer of green. There's a lot of uh, hensa yellow, a cold yellow in here, along with some phthalo green makes a Makes a nice light green. It's going to be the base of the tree. And then we'll come back and we'll put more on. That looks like an awfully blocky tree. Let's see if we can do something to help that out. Oh, that uh, works a little bit. It still looks a little blocky. We'll work on that with layer two maybe and see if we can't uh, <laughs> make that look not quite as blocky. We've got some trees on this side too. Let's just drop those on quick as that. And some trees in the mid-ground here. Going back behind our mountain. And I'm not, at this point, I'm not super worried about painting the individual trees. I'm not worried about uh, branches, anything small like that. I'm just trying to block in some color. And get that on and uh, as we come back and and do more with this we'll put on a second layer of paint that'll help and maybe a third layer of paint that will help define these trees better here's a little bit of ochre maybe a little bit of that red pyrol red uh, in with it just some lines on our desert floor is going to give us a little bit of interest Maybe this is flooded at one point in time. It's got some indentations in there. It's, it's the, the green there. That's some trees uh, on the or bush on the, the desert floor. And here's where you really add a lot to your mountain here. Uh, however I draw these uh, horizontal lines is going to give you the shape of this of this hill here's the crevices they're quite deep I want to get those in there and as I draw these horizontal lines that's just gonna 
define. All of a sudden you can see I've gone from a flat rock here to something with quite a bit of texture and, and depth to it. Maybe must that a little bit. <clears throat> some some dots, some holes in the side here. They don't need to all be lines. And maybe a little bit on the right hand side. I think that's just a little bit wet. I could have waited just a second for that. <clears throat> and your your rocks will be defined by whether you draw an arc up or whether you draw an arc down. You can see it's going to change the way that those rocks look drastically. There's there is that. Now I'm going to mix up some other green. I like to put a little olive green in with uh a little bit of cobalt green and if I need to lighten it a little then throw in some uh, yellow in this case probably Hansa yellow but this is going to define my tree a little bit of shadowing underneath some of these branches and boughs back here I'm not I'm not going to try to make each of these trees just put in where there might be some uh, shadows underneath here a little bit of darker bluer green in a couple of these places very quickly and the viewers eye is going to turn a lot of this into tree for you you don't have to do a lot of that work on your own and you can see in not a lot of time we have really kind of developed uh, a, a, a lot of depth in this video. Yeah, my cobalt green back on the sides of these hills has, has really faded out. So I'm just going to drop in a little bit more color here. Now this is just stuff that's growing up the side of these rock faces. Really tough stuff, really tough that's hanging on in this desert environment. Uh, I don't want that color to come right down to where my trees are, so I'm just going to uh, wet that a little bit. Maybe drop in some reds. You know, maybe there's some spots where those hills show through. And some darks underneath the trees come on. There we go. That's a little shadowy area there. <clears throat> trying to look to see what I need to do. I'm not happy with the back uh, mountains in the background. I think I need to darken them up yet again. Just drop a little extra color on them and blend that up. There we go. Quick and easy like that and I'll have to do the same thing on the one in front while I'm doing that I'll say if you like this painting please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below follow me on Instagram and Twitter links to those down below I do have my own web page I do post there try to post there I try to post once a week Probably I get every two weeks. Uh, so check that out. If you want to contact me, you can contact me through the website. There's a link there. Or drop a message down below in the comments. Uh, now I've mixed up some green. I know there's some stuff growing on the tops of these. I'm just going to drop in ever so slightly a little bit of green. There we go. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed painting it. I always love painting the desert southwest. It's such a beautiful place, the desert. Uh, look for more of my videos. I'm going to try to come out with at least one video a week through the rest of the foreseeable future. Uh, I did take a big break, but I'm trying to get back into it. A little bit more to define these trees here. And I'm going to get a liner. 
brush, a rigger brush, and draw some branches on here. A little sepia, maybe a little uh, neutral tint. Just some sticks sticking out of here every so often. And that is about it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me in the studio this evening. I had a great time. I hope you did too. We'll see you back here in the studio next time. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>